والابن والروح القدس الاله الواحد امين ابونا وسيدنا وراعينا قداسه البابا كيريلوس السادس ونحن اليوم نحتفل بذكراه وبالاعمال الطيبه التي عملها في الكنيسه وبكل ما خلفه من عمل صالح سواء في حياته الاولى وهو راهب او في حياته الكهنوتيه عموما او في حبريته المقدسه كرئيس للكهنه جلس على كرسي ماري مرقس حوالي اثني عشر عاما وفاء منا وحبا لهذا الاب الكبير الذي تربينا في كنفه زمنا وقد قال الكتاب ان نكرم اباءنا على الارض ونذكر مرشدينا الذين ارشدونا في طريق الله وكان الذاهب لزياره البابا كيرلس يعرف انه لا بد ان يحصل على الاتي لا بد ان يرفع يده على راسه ويصلي له صلاه واحيانا يقرا له التحليل فكنت كل مرة اروح اشعر ان انا لازم اخد صلاة ولازم اخد تحليل وايضا كل واحد يزوره لازم ياخد قربانة واحيانا نصر ان يقدم له الطعام فكان كريما جدا في مقابلة ضيوفه في ذلك المكان وكنا نشعر بطيبة الرجل وقلبه المحب وكانت له ايضا ابتسامه رقيقه جدا وعذبه تجبر كل انسان على محبته امام هذه الابتسامه الحلوه وكان يعطي كل انسان حريته في دير ماري مينا في مصر الأبين وكان الرجل يعمل كل ما يستطيع من أجل أن يوفر جوا جديدا لكنيسة ولعل من النقط البارزة التي رأيناه فيها كبطريار مسألة الحاشية أول بطرك اهتم بان تكون له حاشية على مستوى قوي ونظيف ومن اشخاص المباركين كان البابا كيريلوس يحب جدا القديس ماري مينا فتسمى في رهبنته باسم ابونا مينا المتوحد البراموسي وبنى كنيسة في مصر القديمة باسم القديس ماري مينا وحرص على ان يأتي بعظام او رفات القديس ماري مينا جزء منها في كنيسته في مصر القديمة وجزء منها في الدير وكان يحب هذا الدير كثيرا ويذهب اليه ويقضي هناك شهورا في بعض الاوقات وكان شفيعه الاول هو القديس ماري مينا العجيب واذا حلت به ضيقه من الضيقات يكون اسم ماري مينا هو اول اسم امامه من استشفابه وايضا كتب 
في وصيته أن يدفن في دير مارينينا ولعله أراد بهذا شيئين أولا محبته لهذا القديس العظيم وثانيا إحياء هذا الدير وتقويته لأن الآلاف من أولاده الذين يزورون الدير في زيارات متتابعة لا بد أنهم سيهتمون بمكان يحفظ فيه جثمانه الطاهر البابا كيرلس بدأ حياته أولا كراهب محب للوحدة وظل اسم المتوحد يلصق باسمه إلى أن رسم بطريركا رسم راهبا في دير البرموس العامر ثم انتقل إلى مغارة قرب دير البرموس ثم جاء إلى القاهرة هنا بعد متاعد لاقاها مع الرهبان وسكن في طاحونة في الجبل وكان الناس يقصدونه هناك وكان البابا كيرلس رجل صلاة يقيم القداس كل يوم والعشية كل يوم حتى وهو في الطحون في الجبل يعني جايز لما بقت له كنيسة وبيت في مصر القديمة بقت الأمور سهلة لكن وهو في الطحونة في الجبل كان الأمر صعب ومع ذلك كان الله يرسل إليه الشمامسة الذين يخدمون معه في ذلك المكان القصر وينتفعون ببركته إذا أردنا أن نضع صورة رمزية للبابا كيرلس فأحسن صورة إما صورته تحيط به سحابة من البخور أو صورته وهو إلى جوار المذبح لأن البخور كان دائما في حياته كل يوم عشية بالليل وقداس الصبح رفع بخور عشية ورفع بخور باكر وقداس في كل يوم فهو لم يبتعد عن المذبح والبخور طول أيام حياته إلا في فترة مرضه الأخير حينما لم تكن صحته تساعده ومنين ما كانت تحيط به مشكلة يلجأ إلى المذبح وإلى القداس وهكذا كانت حياته في المشاكل لا يتكلم كثيرا مع الناس إنما يكلم الله في القداس وكان بسيطا صفة البساطة صفة جميلة تعطيه كثيرا من نقاوة القلب عاش راهبا عاش متوحدا عاش رئيسا لدير هو دير الأنبا الصموين نذكر حياته الطاهرة ونذكر علاقته بشعبه ونذكر أيضا شعبيته قبل البابا كيرلس كان البابوات دول يخوفوا 
يعني انا افتكر اول مره زرت فيها البطرخانه ما لقيتش حد ابدا زمان قبل البابا كيرلس يعني ودخلت جوه ما فيش حد خالص وطالع على السلالم ما فيش حد والواحد مش عارف رايح فين لغايه لما دخلونا جوه وكان البابا ما يت... البابوات ما بيتقابلوش كتير مع الناس يعني اول واحد اختلط مع الناس بالاختلاط الكامل هو البابا كيرلس كل يوم بيعمل قداس والناس بيقابلوه في القداس يعني على الاقل اللي مش عارف يقابل البابا يروح القداس يقابله واللي مش فاضي يوم القداس يروح في العشية يقابله فممكن لأي إنسان يقابل البابا يسلم عليه لا بالليل لا بالنهار يعني دي حاجة مضمونة وإن كان عايز يتخصص معاه ويدردش معاه أكبر وقت يروح في نص الليل أثناء ما بيعملوا التسبحة يلاقيه واقف يقول التسبحة يرابع معاه فبدأ يكون الشعبية والعلاقة مع الناس والسلام مع الناس يمروا كتير يسلموا ويمشوا ما يركنوش يسلموا ويمشوا ولذلك هذه الشعبية ما تزال لقداسة البابا كيرلس حتى بعد رقاده في الرب نطلب بركته لأنفسنا وللكنيسة ونطلب صلواته عنا ونطلب أن يديم الرب علينا هذه البداءة الطيبة التي بدأها البابا كيرلس لكي تتابعها أجيال من بعده ولنفسه الطاهرة منا كل احترام وتوقير كأب وراع ولإلهنا المجد الدائم إلى الأبد آمين His Holiness Pope Yusab The Pope number 115 He was ordained a patriarch on the 26th of May 1946. He remained on the throne of St. Mark for ten and a half years. He departed on the 13th of November 1956. The throne of St. Mark remained without a patriarch for two and a half years until Sunday. April 19, 1959, when the lot that was casted during liturgy selected Father Mina El Baramosi Al Mutawahid, or the lover of solitude, as the patriarch of the Coptic Orthodox Church. The decree of His Excellency, President of Egypt, number 583 for the year 1959. Regarding the appointment of the Pope of Alexandria and the Patriarch of the Coptic Orthodox Church. After reviewing the Presidential Decree, November 3, 1957, concerning the appointment of a Patriarch of the Coptic Orthodox Christians, and after reviewing the results of the elections performed on Friday and Sunday, the 17th and the 19th of April 1959, and based on the report submitted to us by the Minister of Internal Affairs, we decided to accept the appointment of Higumain Mina El Paramusi as Pope and Patriarch of the Orthodox Christians, signed by Gamal Abdel Nasser, President of the Republic of Egypt. The celebration of His Holiness Pope Kirillus VI, Pope and Patriarch of the Coptic Orthodox Church, took place at the Cathedral of St. Mark Church, Cairo, Egypt. 
hundreds of the bishops, metropolitans, and the elders of the people were in attendance. The gate of the church was shut according to the rites of the Orthodox Church. The patriarch is the one who opens it while saying, Open the gates of righteousness so I may enter. The patriarch enters the church while the celebratory hymns are enchanted, and he stands before the altar, the bishops and metropolitans coming out to greet him. The Metropolitan of Giza read the rites of ordaining a patriarch. The celebration was attended by Mr. Abbas Radwan, the Minister of Internal Affairs, representing His Excellency President Gamal Abdel Nasser. President Gamal Abdel Nasser welcomed His Holiness Pope Kirillus VI at the Presidential Palace. The Patriarch was joined by His Eminences Athanasius, Metropolitan of Beniswaif, Antonius, Metropolitan of Sohag, and Sawiris, Metropolitan of Minya. The visit was to greet the President upon his arrival from the northern part of the country. His Excellency President Gamal Abdel Nasser attended the celebration of establishing the cornerstone of St. Mark Coptic Cathedral in Cairo. His Excellency was met by His Holiness, Pope Kirillus, and the leaders of the Church, both of the Coptic and the Ethiopian Churches. The celebration was attended by the Parliament members and various ministers of Egypt. His Grace, Bishop Antonius, gave the word on behalf of the Pope, thanking the President for his attendance and his contribution in establishing the cathedral. He said, The unity of Muslims and Christians is very strong and have no boundaries. The crescent is always hugging the cross in great unity. Then the president gave a word about the revolution and the religion. He said, the revolution took place to enforce what the heavenly religions all agreed upon and accepted. The president also said, I am proud that our country does not have persecution, division, nor schisms. Then, His Holiness went to the area of the cornerstone where he prayed thanksgiving prayer. Subsequently, President Gamal placed the cornerstone where St. Mark Coptic Orthodox Cathedral would be built. During all of this, many people shouted praising the President and praying for his life and also asking God for the unity between the crescent and the cross. On Monday, April 24, 1967, the bishops of the Coptic Church gathered at St. Mark Cathedral. They gathered from all regions of the country and Ethiopia around His Holiness Pope Kirillus VI, Pope and Patriarch, 
of the Coptic Orthodox Church. They gather to prepare the cooking of the holy oil, which is the bond that connects us all together, regardless of distances, and to connect everyone with the first apostolic church. This is the 26th time to perform this holy task over 20 centuries. His Holiness Pope Kirullus is performing this holy task similar to his predecessors, Saint Mark and other patriarchs in the Coptic Orthodox Church. His Excellency President Gamal and Emperor Haile Selassie attended the celebration of the grand opening of the Coptic Orthodox Cathedral in Egypt. This is where St. Mark relics will be later on moved to. His Holiness Pope Kyrillus met and greeted the President and also the Emperor upon their arrival. This celebration was attended by so many important members, including Mr. Anwar El Sadat. His Eminence Amba Antonius Metropolitan of Suhag gave the greeting and welcoming words on behalf of His Holiness Pope Kirillus. That was followed by a word from the President of Egypt, who contributed 150,000 Egyptian pounds to help building the cathedral. He also greeted the Emperor of Ethiopia, who came specifically to attend the opening of the cathedral. Pope Kirullus VI sent a formal letter to His Holiness Pope Paul VI of the Catholic Church requesting the return of St. Mark relics to his home country, Egypt. The Embassy of Vatican in Egypt worked hard facilitating this request. The Pope formed a delegate from the Coptic bishops and metropolitans to go and receive the relics of St. Mark in Rome. This delegate consisted of 10, including His Grace Bishop Marcus, Bishop of Abutik, His Grace Bishop Michael, Bishop of Asyut, His Grace Bishop Antonius, Bishop of Sohag, His Grace Bishop Botros, Bishop of Achmim, His Grace Bishop Yehnes, Bishop of Tigray, Ethiopia, his Grace Bishop Lucas, Bishop of Arusi, Ethiopia. His Grace Bishop Botros, Bishop of Gondar, 
Ethiopia, His Grace Bishop Domadius, Bishop of Giza, His Grace Bishop Gregorius, General Bishop of Academic Affairs and Studies, His Grace Bishop Boulis, Bishop of Helwan. On the 28th of June 1968, the committee traveled to Rome in a private plane. They met with His Holiness Pope Paul of the Vatican, and they received from him the holy relics of St. Mark. On the 24th of June 1968, the Coptic Committee returned back to Egypt, carrying the holy relics. A private plane arrived today from Rome. The holy relics of the martyr St. Mark was on it, carried by the Coptic delegates. His Holiness Pope Kirullus walked towards the plane, followed by representatives of many churches. The committee delivered the box that carries the holy relics to His Holiness Pope Kirullus, who kissed it and carried it on his shoulders towards the car. A multitude of people were enchanting and praising. Emperor Haile Selassie arrived to the papal center to congratulate His Holiness on receiving the holy relics. The emperor was received by His Holiness Pope Kirillus and many of the leaders of the church and a special liturgy was conducted in view of the emperor's visit. The deacons with their attire, the priests, and of course the bishops and metropolitans, all following His Holiness Pope Kirillus and the Emperor of Ethiopia. Saint Mary appeared in Zaytun and the Pope announced on May 4, 1964, this particular decree. In fullness of faith and joy, and in full thanks to our Lord, Saint Mary, the Mother of God, appeared in many forms and in clear ways and for long times, sometimes reaching two hours without interruption, starting from the 2nd of April 1968 at her church in Zaytun, Toman Bay Street, along the Mataria Street which is historically known as the place visited by the Holy Family. May God continue to give us these blessings and give peace to our country and our blessed people, which was said about them in the scripture, Blessed my people Egypt. There was a very strong bond of love, respect, and admiration between Pope Kirillus and President Nasser. On September 28, His Holiness received the news of President Nasser's death with a lot of grief and sadness. He later on produced a message that was read to all Egyptians, saying, The sadness that shadows all our country for the departure of our beloved president and our strongest hero, Gamal Abdel Nasser, is hard to explain or even to express. The news shook me from inside and also affected so many people inside and outside Egypt. It's hard to believe that all the hopes of the Egyptians which are embodied in our president can die. But Gamal did not die and will not die. What he did in 20 years was not accomplished by his predecessors in decades. Generations will continue to remember this amazing man who compelled his enemies before his friends to respect him and fear him. He is the president that no one can deny his heroism 
or greatness, his ability to forgive in strength. The sadness in our hearts is beyond expression, but our faith that his principles and values are without limits and will live forever. This belief is filling our hearts with hope. Let us send them to the eternal life. I give my sympathy and consolation to all the Egyptians and all the Arab countries in a man who is very rare to find similar in any other humans. Signed by Kirullus the sixth Pope and Patriarch of the Coptic Orthodox Church. Subsequently, His Holiness Pope Kirullus went to the presidential palace and offered his condolences to Mr. Anwar al-Sadat, who was the vice president. The Pope was very emotional when he was speaking about his friendship and relationship with the president. He recorded a message of condolences and the feelings of the Coptic Egyptians and their sadness on the departure of President Nasser. When Sadat became the new president following President Nasser, Pope Kirillus went and congratulated him along several of his cabinet members on October 12, 1970. He also expressed the support of all the Coptic Christians to President Sadat. President Sadat had deputized one of his cabinet to attend the Feast of Nativity in St. Mark Cathedral. Pope Kirillus asked all people to pray for our country Egypt while she is thriving to defeat her enemies. At 10 p.m. on Tuesday, March 9, 1971, our beloved Pope Kirillus departed to paradise. What's so peculiar that his private watch stopped precisely at the exact same time of his departure. Upon his departure, the papal center informed the president's office in addition to informing the bishops, metropolitans, and all the leaders of the world. They announced this in a formal report. The Coptic Orthodox Church in full sadness announces the departure of her shepherd, the thrice merciful Pope Kirillus VI, Pope and Patriarch of the Coptic Orthodox Church. The Holy Synod also wrote a eulogy in the main Egyptian daily journal Al-Ahram saying, The Holy Synod announces the departure of its shepherd, the kind of heart, the thrice merciful, Pope Kirillus VI, Pope and Patriarch, of the Orthodox Christian Church. The Pope number 116 on the throne of St. Mark the Evangelist of all Africa, departed to the bosom of all the saints, leaving a very good effect on the hearts of the Christians and non-Christians in Egypt and all over the world. He had fulfilled his duties as the head of priests to the utmost level, and now he receives the crown of a spiritual struggle that he truly deserves. May God give us a good and similar replacement. The funeral prayer will be conducted on his holy body at 5 p.m. March 11, 1971. All the hearts of the Egyptians were shaken for the departure of His Holiness Pope Kirillus, Pope and Patriarch of the Coptic Orthodox Church. President Sadat and several of his cabinet members arrived at the Papal Center to convey their condolences for the loss of the beloved father who served his country 
for over 44 years. He was a great role model for his kindness, respect, and love of his countrymen. At St. Mark the New Cathedral, the funeral prayers were conducted on his holy body. The prayers were attended by the Prime Minister as representative of the President and several other important figures of the Parliament and Ministers. Thousands and thousands of people had come earlier to have their final look on their shepherd and to say goodbye while his body was seated on the throne. The prayer was conducted by many bishops and priests. After the end of the prayers, his body was carried in a coffin in a procession towards the altar where he was buried near St. Mark. The bond and love between St. Mina the Martyr and Pope Kirullus is very strong. Even from before he became a Pope, as Father Mina the Monk, he formed one of the strongest bonds between humans on earth and an intercessor in paradise. He was loyal to this friendship. When he was a layman, when he became a monk, when he went to the windmill, and even when he became a patriarch, he continued this connection and friendship. This bond did not end with death, but continued even afterwards. Pope Kirillus indicated in his will to be buried next to his friend and intercessor, Saint Mina, at his monastery. Thank you.